This is Katie Bunshoten, the founder and CEO of Certum Solutions here in North Carolina. Today, I'm going to go through a quick uh, view of how to set up your QuickBooks Online sync between your Big Commerce store and your QuickBooks Online store. OK, it's only going to take a few minutes, but I just want to make sure that I point out this is not the same as your QuickBooks desktop sync. Uh, that's going to be different. So if you're trying to sync QuickBooks desktop, uh, go ahead and reach out to us. There's a couple ways we can do that, but for today I'm focusing on QuickBooks Online. OK, and I'll also go ahead and plug if you do need a discounted version uh, or trial of QuickBooks Online, Go ahead and pick that link in the description of this video. And as always, uh, if you could kindly subscribe to our channel, uh, like this video and or and or comment on this video. Let me know what you think of it and how I can improve. I'd really appreciate it. So getting started, we are now in the big commerce uh, store here. You can see Katie's demo store. This is my sandbox on the big commerce side. I also have on my other window here and it's Chrome, but this is Canary. So it might be a different color than what you're used to. Uh, I have my QuickBooks online demo company. OK, so this is the one you're seeing in my other videos. For the most part, it's my QuickBooks online advanced company. This works the same no matter which QuickBooks company you have. OK, so I'm going to go over and I'm going to initiate this sync from my big commerce store today. So I'm going to go over here to my apps button in the left ribbon and I'm going to look in my marketplace. You can see I don't have any apps connected right now. So we're going to go ahead and look for some apps. OK. Now. We want to look for our QuickBooks app or integrator integration. Sorry, so you can see here QuickBooks Online. If you do have desktop, uh, that's going to be a Webgility sync. We are also Webgility partners to so reach out to us and we'll get you some cool discounts there. But we're going to focus again on QuickBooks Online. This one's easy peasy. You can do it yourself. OK, there's no cost. There's no recurring fee. OK, so I'm going to click on get this app. And it's going to say, is this for an existing store or a new one? I'm going to pick Katie's demo. OK, and then we have QuickBooks Online here. All right. So it now has an install button, so you want to go ahead and hit install. And you want to go ahead and confirm. Now make sure you take a look at what they can see here. Before you hit your confirm button. And now it's doing its magic and you're going to pop up. It's going to pop up a screen here in a minute. OK, so now it's it now shows our app in the toolbar here. We want to go ahead and connect BigCommerce to QuickBooks Online. We've connected the one side. We haven't connected the other side. If you're new to QuickBooks, don't start a free trial here. You're not going to get the discounts that we have. Just go ahead and sit, select already a QuickBooks Online customer. Log into QuickBooks Online and connect to QuickBooks. And if you need QuickBooks reach out to us. When you use us to help get your software, you actually help us continue to do uh, things like this. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I'm going to stop sharing or recording for a minute while I go ahead and sign in. OK, guys, so at this time it's gone ahead. Let me sign in and it brought up a menu of different companies we could connect to. I selected our demo company here. If you are an accounting firm, you can go ahead and install for your firm. I'm going to hit next. Now it's verifying the connection. successfully connected to QuickBooks Online. Sometimes you might get an error the first time and you just have to try it again, um, but it will go through eventually. So we want to double check now that our settings are correct. This is these are our settings for the QuickBooks and BigCommerce integrations, and you can see how easy that is, right? This is something that's so easy. Go ahead and make sure that your time zones correct your integrations. You want to say when do I want to start integrating everything? I'm just leaving that for today. Want to make sure that you go ahead and accept the policies. 
OK, and before we turn this on, I'm going to double check my settings down here. You can set up a few different workflows. Let me hit OK there too. Do I want to retrieve orders with my statuses, awaiting fulfillment, awaiting pickup, completed so far, so on and so forth. Um, so in BigCommerce, if you're watching this video, you probably have it already. Uh, you know there's several different statuses on your dashboard and not all of those do you want to bring over, okay? So something is disputed or there's, you know, for some reason it's in some sort of holding pattern, you may not want those to come over. Maybe you do. It just depends on what your accountant and you or yourself you decide on okay so it defaults to the ones that are selected here and and that's mainly why because a lot of these may you know may not be needed to bring over do you want to bring this over as a sales invoice or sales receipt i've covered this before but you know the difference between invoice and receipt your invoice is going against your accounts receivable account and that's something that you're getting paid for later whereas a sales receipt something you've gotten money for right at the time of sale like a point of sale transaction okay so i'm going to leave it on sales receipt then do we want some sort of prefix? Why would you not want a prefix? You know, so I would leave mine BC. Then um, it may, the prefix may show up on any other items that are in your QuickBooks. You know, I know we talked about custom orders before. Um, it has a 10, QuickBooks always ticks up from the number before it. So if you have items from several different sources, you actually may not want your order number prefix. So you'll want to decide on, on whether that's important to you or not. What shipping item do you want? I'm going to leave that as a default. I'm going to leave gift carts as a default, assign sale to the, I'm going to do original customer. You can do generic customer. Um, it would keep you know the, your customer list down, but let's just leave it original customer. Do we want automatic invoice numbers? Okay. I'm going to say yes, but since we pick sales receipt, it won't actually work. Yeah, OK, I think it'll go on your sales receipt as well. OK, rounding off product. Um, so do we want to round the product off? OK, so if you do have like a rounding discrepancy, kind of like you do when you do a bank reconciliation, that's where you're going to put that account there. I'm just going to leave it as the default. And then what do you want your discount product to be if you do apply a discount? And then is there an offset to the due date? The due date piece, the invoice number piece, I don't believe those are going to have an effect because we selected sales receipt up here. OK. Do we want to retrieve canceled or refunded orders from BigCommerce? I'm going to say yes. OK, and then I'm going to say typically we're going to, to refund the money from our main account. OK, let's pick advanced options. Again, refund order number prefix. If you have an R in front of it, that doesn't, I mean, I don't think that would be a big deal. So I'm going to leave that as the default. Match BigCommerce products by the following QuickBooks field. Do you want to? uh match them based on the SKU or the name okay i know a lot of clients that do have SKUs. you're probably going to want to pick SKU here if you don't have SKUs, you just have names pick names the kicker is with names is that it needs to match it exactly um, with SKUs, you have less of an opportunity to kind of have that human error piece but you know either way it does need to match if it does not match it's going to try to create a new item so do you want to create items as a non inventoried item or an inventoried item? And uh, so, you know, in QuickBooks, you do have several different types of items. Non inventoried items are ones that you are not looking at a stock status report on. If you you can still count how many you sold, OK, but it's not going to say I've got so many on hand right now because it's non inventoried. OK, inventoried items is going to track that quantity on hand. I'm going to pick an income account. I'm just picking some generic accounts on these um, to show you the sync. OK, map big commerce tax codes to QuickBooks Online tax codes. With most of the new QuickBooks Online uh, subscriptions, they have automatic sales tax. So that makes it easy here. We don't have to configure the tax mappings. And where do we want to deposit payments into? You know, 
I'm going to pick on deposited funds because I'm kind of weird about having stuff just dump into my checking account. OK, I want to be able to match them. Now, if you get to start the sync and you're like, oh, my gosh, well, I'll just match is fine. I have no problems. Go back. You can change it back to your checking account if you want. OK, I'm putting mine as undeposited funds because I don't want to mess up my bank reconciliation. OK, and what are our payment methods? So quick or big commerce does work with QuickBooks online payments. OK, they also have uh, Braintree, which is a PayPal uh, brand. Uh, and then you do have gift card store credit and test payment gateway. I'm leaving all these blanks. Save. OK, you must agree to the terms before you can sync your data. I did agree to the terms, so it should be fine. Do we want to update stock levels? I think we left everything as non-inventory, so it sh that shouldn't actually affect anything. Because we are not actually tracking stock levels in QuickBooks Online if you're picking a non-inventory item, but I'll just go ahead and select it. All right, and again, it brings up the other question with the name and SKU. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save. By activating this option, you confirm QuickBooks is your master stock management application. All stock levels are correctly set up and all SKUs match between the systems. Let's go ahead and uncheck that since we don't have it set up for inventory items. Okay, all right, so I think I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Boom, and it's gonna say that no data was synchronized for this workflow because this is an empty environment. But if you did have data, you'd see a sync and things would come over. That is it for today's video. I made it short and sweet. Uh, you, oh, here, you can turn off your auto sync. You can sync now and you can go back into some configuration options. If you do have questions about this video or I didn't touch on something or maybe I was vague on something, please do leave a comment and let me know. Uh, otherwise, hopefully this helps you see how easy it is to sync your QuickBooks online to your big commerce. And um, yeah, so you're good to go. All right, let me know if I can help. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.